Uh, right then, so in this video I'm going to show you how you can use some of the techniques that I've already shown you plus some additional ones uh, to create uh, an image kind of similar um, to this. You'll notice I've got some um, adjustment layers going on over here. I've got a uh, monochrome adjustment layer there. Uh, I also have a layer mask and I've got some text. So there's nothing really that new. Um, it, I'm just showing you how you can use some of the skills that I've uh, shown you uh, in some slightly different ways. Okay. So, first of all, let's get started. So the image that I'm going to use as a base is this one, Girl with Rose. And as before, I've shared these up with you on the Google Classroom. Um, so, in order to get Girl with Rose open, I'm going to drag it across and I'm going to drop it over this uh, icon here. It kind of looks like uh, a couple of eyes and a nose because that's exactly what it is. But if you drag and drop um, an image from your uh, file browser over to there, you, when you drag it and drop it, it will create a new image from that, um, from that image. Now, as you can see, uh, the image that I have uh, dragged across, uh, it is all um, full colour, um, but in my final thing over here, uh, we've got a black and white image. So, how did I do that? Well, you're probably already one step ahead of me and you've said, well, you just used a, an adjustment layer, and that's exactly what I did. So, uh, what I'm going to do is create a new layer. Uh, I'm going to call it monochrome adjustment layer. I am setting the um, layer type uh, to HSV saturation. Um, you can set it to... Um, do I want HSV saturation? No, I'm going to say um, LCH color. That's what we used before and I think that's going to give us a slightly better uh, result. So. Um, Here's one thing that I'm going to do slightly differently. Um, when you normally create a layer, um, you have fill with uh, transparency selected. But what I'm going to do is I am going to fill it um, with my foreground color, uh, which is black. OK, so if I select foreground color, you'll notice I've got black selected there. Uh, if you don't have black selected, you can obviously click on the color and then you can select it. And then once you're ready, click OK. And magically, here we go. We've got our, um, our monochrome girl in the picture. But if you remember from my, uh, from my picture over here, uh, I have uh, certain elements of the picture in full color. So what do I need to do? I just need to erase those parts of the the um, adjustment layer. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on this rose. I'm going to select my eraser tool. Uh, that brush is way too big, so I'm going to scale the brush down a bit. And then as I erase, you'll notice the color comes back. Okay, now one thing um, that you can do here. Um, let's say you wanted to bring the color back, but you didn't want it to come back like full brightness like this. What you can do is set the um, uh, you can set the opacity of your brush. If you set the opacity to uh, fifty percent, you'll notice it's not as vibrant when you uh, when you bring it when you uh, when you bring it back like that. That's because if I just uh, make the base layer invisible, you'll see that um, the bit that I've rubbed out is completely transparent. The bit that I um, set my opacity to uh, to 50%, um, it hasn't uh, rubbed out all of it. So there's still a little bit, which means not all of the color is coming back through. Okay, so if you wanted to uh, uh, not entirely um, uh, bring back everything that's that's something that you can do but I'm just going to turn this back on here uh, I'm going to set the opacity back to 100 because I want my full brightness of the rose um, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this fairly uh, quickly obviously uh, if you want uh, more accuracy you can you can take your time with it uh, if you need to know what the actual image looks like you can make your adjustment layer invisible just to bring back the full color so you can see which bits um, you need to uh, to carry on erasing I can see there I've got a leaf here uh, so I am going to erase uh, that leaf um, and I've gone a little bit over the edges uh, but that's something uh, that I can fix after going back to it now remember uh, what I'd have to do is set 
my uh, brush to a paint brush so I can paint back uh, the black onto uh, that uh, color adjustment layer. Okay. Now, what I would be doing if I was doing this professionally, I'd be zooming all the way in um, and uh, using a fairly uh, small brush to go around the edges, uh, but for the purposes of this video um, that is going to look good enough. Uh, I believe I also had her hairband uh, full brightness so let's just sort that out as well. Do -do -do. Okay, and there we go. If I zoom back out, um, we've now got the uh, black and white image and we have the uh, bits of it in full colour. Um, so the next part of my, uh, my original image, well what I've done is I've added some text and I have used a layer mask um, so that the text shows through a, uh, on a, uh, a background. Okay, so um, if we uh, see if I can make this visible. Um, uh, no, I'll tell you what. I'll just show you the, the the full thing as I as I go along making it. So I in my um, in my files I have this file called Rose Petals. I'm going to drag it, and I do, I want it to be added as a new layer to this image. So I'm not going to drag it over here. I'm just going to drag it onto my canvas. When I let go, it creates this new um, layer. I'm going to rename that. I don't want it to be called rosepetals.jpg. I'm going to call it rose petals. Okay. Now, don't panic. The rest of the image is still there. If I make this layer invisible, you can see it's still there. It's fine, right? So I'm going to um, now add some more text. Uh, I'm going to select the text icon. Uh, I want my text to uh, go along here, and uh, the text is going to say uh, a rose by uh, any other name would. I can't see what I'm typing, so uh, just to make it a little bit more visible, there we go. Uh, would. Where's my text tool? Here we go. Would smell as sweet. That's a Shakespeare quote for you there. So I'm now going to adjust the size of this. I want that in uh, points and let's just increase that until it pretty much fills the box there. Um, and I think I am going to make it um, bold as well. Uh, so maybe let's just decrease the font size there. Am I going to make it bold? No, I'm not going to make it bold. It's just going to be just going to be normal. So let's increase the font size back up to where it was. And I'm also going to put an ellipsis on the end. Those three dots, it's called an ellipsis. There you go. Uh, now you'll notice up here I've got some marching ants, which is probably not what I want. Um, if you ever are in that situation, if you're trying to paint somewhere and nothing's happening, um, it might be that you've got a selection still made uh, and you'll need to deselect that by pressing Control shift a and that should deselect everything. Uh, I'm just going to bring everything back here. Uh, there we go. So selecting that, Control shift a deselect everything, boom. So what I'm going to do now um, is I want to actually select all of this text and I want to create a new layer mask on my rose petals layer um, which uh, creates uh, a mask um, which is going to allow the, the petals behind to come through just where the text is. Okay, So if I want to select all of this text in one go, uh, there's a pretty neat trick you can do. If you go to um, uh, select at the top and then select by colour, so select by colour, make sure you're on the text layer, and then uh, you might have to zoom in to do this, uh, but all you have to do is select uh, part of the text, which is black, and you'll see it's instantly selected all of that text. Very nice, right? 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Rose Petals layer. We're going to create a layer mask. So create the layer mask and on this bit here, instead of selecting white, uh, which is what we would normally do, which is the default, I'm going to select selection, which means everything will be invisible except for the bits that we've got selected. OK, and then when I click on add, there we go. Now, at the moment, there's just it, it, the text looks mostly black and there's a few bits of uh, red. That's because we've still got the actual text layer visible. I'm not going to delete that text layer, I'm just going to make it invisible. And as soon as I do that, you can see, if I just press Control shift a to deselect everything, um, we've got the, um, uh, the text showing through. I've just realized as well, I've made a spelling mistake. Um, so if that happens, um, don't panic. Um, what you'll have to do is um, you can go back, you can control Z um, uh, to undo everything that you've done, uh, remove the, uh, the layer mask, or you can just delete the layer mask. Uh, you've got to go back and edit your text. Make sure that you've got the text um, selected. I'm going to press Control shift a to deselect everything. Just going to click in there, edit that, uh, and then uh, we can just go through that process again. So I'm going to go to select by color. Uh, I am going to select there and now that I've done that I'm going to go back to my rose petals um, and uh, add a new layer mask. Uh, add by selection and there we go. Okay, Control shift a to deselect everything and we're almost we're almost at the point where we were um, before. But you'll notice I've added some other little special effects here. First of all, I've got a drop shadow on my text, and then I've used another effect called Edge Detect. Okay, so if we want to get a, a drop shadow on the text, there's a slight trick that we have to do. We can't just apply drop shadow um, to this text here because it's part of a layer mask. But what we can do is we can create a new layer from just this text. And this is how we do it. We're going to make everything except for that text layer invisible. OK, so click on the eye icon next to every single layer except for your rose petals layer. And then you're going to right click on that layer um, and there should be this option new from visible that will create a new layer using everything that's currently visible okay so when I click new from visible we get a new layer okay you can see at the moment it's called visible I'm going to change it to um, uh, rose petal uh, text and there we go and when I uh, bring everything else back um, you can see it is there. Now I can make the uh, the actual rose petal layer invisible now because I have this other layer that I can work with. And the great thing about it is if you change your mind you decide ah you know what I, I don't really want it to look like that you can just get rid of that layer your old layer is still here you can go back you can make some changes um, to it. Okay. So now I'm going to apply a drop shadow filter just like I showed you in the last video, going to Filters, Light and Shadow, uh, Drop Shadow, and let's see, I want to increase the opacity, I'm going to reduce the blur radius there, and I'm just going to bring it a little bit closer back in, let's make it possibly like that, maybe. that um, yeah there we go that that looks about right okay uh, maybe I'll bring it in a little bit a little bit closer Okay, it's just to make it stand out a little bit. Okay, so now I've added that drop shadow, makes the text stand out a little bit more. Um, and you'll notice that if I make that invisible, bring back my old text layer, there is no drop shadow applied to that. It's merely on the, um, the new from visible. 
that we created. Note I've still got my uh, my original text there as well. Um, so what I could do if I wanted to uh, is just bring that back in and then uh, we've effectively got the text and then we've got this uh, this outline around the outside that's a, a, a potential uh, effect that you could go for uh, but the other filter I was going to show you was this one if you go to filters and then go to edge detect and select neon um, it does a little bit of calculations and you get this. You can adjust things like radius and intensity. Now bear in mind because there's a lot of calculations going on every time you make the slightest change it will it will take a long time to recalculate. So you've got to you you know don't go crazy with the with the sliders. Uh, have a have a play around and just be a bit patient with it. Um, you can also change the intensity as well. I'm not entirely sure what that's going to look like. Oh wow, that makes it yeah very very bright, which is probably not not what we want. Let's make it a whole lot less intense there. Uh, bring that bring that back down. Uh, can I bring it all the way down? There we go. Okay, and once you're happy with that, um, you can just click on OK, and there we go. Um, it's that was my original one that I said I was going to make, and there we go. I mean, there's some slight differences, probably down to the uh, um, the way that we applied the filters. But you can see how uh, just by using um, those special effects that I've shown you, uh, drop shadows and um, uh, color adjustment layers, and um, a couple of uh, layer masks and, uh, and and edge detect filters you can create something pretty uh, impressive so there you go